Hi, hello, welcome to Lettywood Gaming. So I've been having trouble trying to record a game today. I was trying to get Anna recorded and it just kept crashing and not recording properly. So I need a little break from that. I need a break from the horror. So I'm just gonna play a nice little, little game here that all of you already know is horror. Everyone knows already, it's not a surprise, but. Okay, here we go. Enter my name, Bloody Big. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally, totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh an idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! Ha! I overslept again! But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Luddy Wig. Well, well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Luddywig, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already. I'm really not interested. Oh, I told you already. I'm not really not interested in joining any clubs. Oh boy. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games on Amine. I like her bow, though. Her hands are very tiny compared to her head, though. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Oh, girls. More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. Relent to her? I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Ooh, me too, buddy. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the Amine Club. Hello? Sayori! Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There is no way I'm going to your club. Meanie. Eh? Sayori is vice pre president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. 
since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the m &A club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well... I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Hey, hey, hey. Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. She's cunning. She's cunning like a snake. I let out a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes! Let's go! <laughs> and thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Every day is that day for me. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I, t I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Um, I'm not good at voices, so a lot of them are gonna sound the same. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. I mean, uh, my cat's here. You wanna do a voice? You wanna do a voice? No, you wanna walk on the computer keyboard. Ah, Letty Wig, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. How do you know my name? Dot, dot, dot. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Wow. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club, and the one with the best boobs. <laughs> don't, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears com comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Luddywig. I already forgot her voice. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Luddywig. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? So you suddenly become British. I'm sorry, her voice is not going to be the same. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Ah! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know... Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. She's a stalker! Is she waiting for me to take a bite? Because there's poison! I finally bite down into razor blades! 
The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. Okay, fine. It's a normal cupcake. Whatever. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything. Eh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said... Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gives us permission. I, I, I've already forgotten her voice, hold on. <laughs> Don't worry, the teacher gives us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that's, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Ah, <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You'll have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal, like every other dating game. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why we're all so delighted by the idea of a new member jo joining. They were all so delighted, not we. I'm not a member yet. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Luddy Wig, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up! It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile! And her boobs! Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. Mm-hmm. Unless it's behind her back and up her butt, I doubt she is. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. 
stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? <laughs> anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. I'm dumb. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. <coughs> Her voice is gonna kill me. For someone as gentle as you... I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Wh what What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! Give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, your everything you do is just as cute as you are! Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems! <laughs> uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Aw, oh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay! I have an idea, everyone. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Uh. Yeah! Let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Bloodywig? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, oh, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes, with a little bit of red around each corner. Oof. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought. Who? <laughs> Buddy wig. You, you all, uh, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. What? One by one, the girls' eyes light up. <laughs> yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I'd be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. 
I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Luddy Wig, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Luddy Wig! Since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori, I, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed after for school. After school for clubs! Whoa, brain! Whoa, brain! Whoa. Sure, might as well. Yay! Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry. With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori. Natsuki. Yuri. And, of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. You decide! Uh, all right. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh, they're so cute! It's time to write a poem! Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, look at them! They're so cute! Okay. Uh, so, from what I know, she likes creativity. She likes cute things. I have no idea what she likes. Why the hell is suicide on there? Spies. Oh, sorry. Contamination. A lot of weird words on here. Um, I'm going to do twirl. Okay. Uh, graveyard. Uh, tragedy. She likes sad things. Okay. Face, starscape, holiday, fantasy, vivid, nibble, holiday. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to get her because she's my neighbor and it just makes sense. Um. Yes. Okay, so she likes the sad, creepy things. Got it. Uh, spinning together, fireflies, grief, wonderful, silly, cheer, climax. Grief. Okay. Cry. Shame. Okay, this is very sad. <laughs> Secretive. Okay, yeah, that was her. Uh, defeat. Jumpy puppy hair, shiny bed, hurt. Milk pleasure. Depression. Massacre. Okay, I guess I'm going between those two. Got it. Uh, broken. Insight playground, sunny peace, color explode, dazzle whirlwind. Uh, how about insight? Ooh, okay. Uh, she's clumsy. Portrait, anime, misfortune, fester, skipping. Nope. Uh, F. What the heck is that word? Uh. Okay, okay, big words are her. Uh, anxiety. Oh, damn it. Uh, misery. Okay. <laughs> you got between those two. Hi again, Ludwig. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. Whoops. Whoops. Uh oh, where'd I go? There I go. God. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Ludwig. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Uh... Natsuki finds herself stuck between Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Ludwig always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. 
How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Nutty Wig can become good friends, too. Um... Sayori. Hmm? Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy! It's really nothing. What is it? No, never mind. They already made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. First, first, first. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Th this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging through around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Mmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? Oh, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Uh, <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Uh -huh. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. And like me, it was trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. 
I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Oh, God, hello! Hello! Ah! <laughs> You're real close there, Sayori. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Ah, sorry! Wait! Actually, I'm not sorry at all! It's your fault for sleeping like that! This isn't the napping club! Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for m &A, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a prob- That's a problem. <laughs> what about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, uh, not every day. It's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't, I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh, then I need some soap. Sayori glances around at herself. I don't see it. How is it written all over me? You are clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Huh? I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. I keep forgetting who's talking. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean! Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Whoa. <laughs> Very close. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to finally close the button near your chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Are your boobs too big? Hey, <laughs> hey. He did when I bought it! <sighs> <coughs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again! Don't say that out loud! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so, uh... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so s But it's so stuffy! Ooh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Whew, that's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, let's just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. 
<laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Bloody wig, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Uh, yeah. My re relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've really never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? All right, I'm gonna end the episode here before we read the poems, um, just because it's been going on for a while. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm a little excited to play this game. I yeah. So yeah, we're gonna keep going, see what happens. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.